Welcome everyone to our latest Digital Service Squad webinar this morning. And we are talking about time management for entrepreneurs and digital marketers. And today we're joined by Sophia Lemon, Digital Service Squad team member. Hello. So that, there you go, yeah, <laughs> that's very important. Um, and Rochelle Reynolds is also with us. And so, yeah, we're excited to share with you some tips and tricks on time management. And um, just really quickly uh, jumping to the next slide, I always uh, like to mention that here in South Georgian Bay, the Digital Service Squad is managed by the Small Business Enterprise Center. Um, so that's where you can find all the info about us at enterprisecenter.ca and always, uh, Want to give a shout out to our local partners and support uh, from Simcoe County, uh, the town of Collingwood and the town of the Blue Mountains have really um, helped support us in a, in a big way to keep our digital service squad going throughout the last couple of years through the pandemic. And we're eternally grateful for that support. Um, and it's awesome. So uh, all that to say too that the digital service squad is still available for consultation and support i believe we might have the details at the end of the presentation to share otherwise we'll put them in the chat uh, for you to connect with us at any time so that is it for me uh, i'm going to hand off to sophia and rochelle to take us through today's webinar excellent yes so as ben mentioned we are talking about time management. And so here's just a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at today. So first of all, how to eliminate distractions, something that we all struggle with, I'm sure. Um, how to take control of our schedules and our calendars. How to make email and other behind the scenes tasks in our businesses a bit more efficient. And how to make posting to social media more efficient. And then of course, we will share a whole bunch of tools with you that you hopefully will find very useful. Um, I personally would like to get to know all of you a little bit better. I'm not sure if our um, attendees are able to speak, but could you guys maybe post in the chat um, who you are, what you do, where you're located. And I especially would like to know what you struggle with most when it comes to time management in your business. So I am definitely the type of person who struggles with email when it comes to time management, hence why that is a big part of today's webinar. Is everyone able to put a little bit of information in the chat? While we wait for that, perhaps Rochelle and I will introduce ourselves. So as Ben mentioned, I am Sophia Lemon. I photograph ridiculously happy people. And I am a giant nerd, which is the only reason that people think that I am organized. Um, because I geek out over my calendar and making everything as efficient as possible because I also rather enjoy being lazy. Rochelle, would you like to introduce yourself? For sure, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rochelle Reynolds. I am best known uh, as an actor, writer, director. That's my, my primary vocation. Um, so I'm that turned digital marketing expert and, and video production uh, uh, coordinator, assistant, what have you. Um, I believe I'm qualified to speak on this topic because I currently have six different jobs that I manage and basically at any given time in my life, I have no fewer than four. Um, so time management is critical to um, my success and my ability to um, float, as it were. Um, and it is something that I also get quite excited about. For me, it's um, if I could like I uh, put it into a metaphor or whatever. It, for me, it always feels like I'm just playing uh, Tetris with my own with my own time and energy. That's that's what it feels like literally all the time. How can I make this work and this work and this work and and uh, still have time for me and for fun? So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Okay, one of my favorite video games is definitely Tetris. So I'm gonna have to avoid 
that on my phone for the next hour so that I can give this presentation. Don't get distracted, Sophia. I see that Denise Adair posted in the chat in Collingwood Macy's Treats. Um, and now I'm hungry. So thank you, Denise. You said that you struggle with your schedule and with distractions, which is great because that's where we're going to start out. Help, I'm distracted. Oh, look, a cat video. Okay, so we're, let's be like perfectly honest with each other. Um, we all get distracted. Um, this is just what happens in a digital world. I think we need to address this before we move any further with this webinar. Um, technology in general um, is a black hole of cat videos and video games like Tetris. Um, so the first thing that we can do to get some of our time back is to eliminate those distractions. And some easy way ways to do this are first give yourself some time limits. Um, so limit the amount of time that you're spending on social media or browsing YouTube or playing Tetris. Um, if you find it difficult to force yourself to do this, use the parental controls on your phone, on your computer to shut those things down when you've been on them for too long. Or there's tools like Freedom, which actually let you set limits and completely block these things out so you can't even open them for a set period of time. Um, I have used Freedom in the past myself, and it has been excellent for keeping me from spending hours and hours and hours scrolling through Facebook and rather trying to get through all of my emails. Um, and then don't think that you have to be available to people 24-7. Um, use the do not disturb function on your phone to silence text messages and phone calls and emails so that while you're working on important tasks, you're not getting distracted by those beeps and bing sounds that you hear all the time, and then immediately going to put out a fire that, you know, you don't have to put out this moment. Okay, so this is pretty important. Build all of your tasks into your calendar and use your calendar to keep focused on the task at hand. So this will help ensure that you focus on everything that you need to focus on through the day, that you don't end up spending way more hours on one task and letting other people, other things fall to the side. Um, you will need to self-monitor to a certain extent and make sure that when one time period is up that you move on to the next. Um, but both Rochelle and myself find time blocking like this extremely useful. Just to be clear, this calendar in this picture does not belong to any of us. Um, I just thought it looked particularly absurd. Um, so understand that you're going to get distracted. Um, I have some of my best ideas while I'm driving, and I can't be addressing those great ideas while I'm driving, because as we all know, it's illegal. <laughs> um, but what I do is I use um, a to-do list organizer. I use OmniFocus so that I can just tell Siri to put that item into my to-do list and I can deal with it later and continue focusing on the task at hand, for example, driving or answering emails or whatever it is that I'm working on at any given time. Um, Rochelle mentioned to me earlier yesterday um, that she finds, um, she functions best when she gets her meetings done in the morning. Um, I find that morning meetings with the digital service squad, for example, or with my own team are great, but I personally prefer to have consultations in the afternoon. And I also find that I'm particularly creative in the morning. So I go ahead and schedule things that require the most focus for early in the morning when things are quiet, when I'm motivated. Um, but maybe you were best in the middle of the night. And part of the beauty of being the boss is that you get to make your own schedule. So we recommend that you make your schedule according to what works best for your timeline. And then I'm going to let Rochelle take it from here on, you know, what works best for you, Rochelle. And then you also mentioned having contingency plans. Yes, for sure. So uh, first I'll speak to um, uh, kind of knowing, knowing your, your own self and your own ebb and flow and, and that. So it's like, it, for me, it's really interesting to hear that you prefer uh, to take all your meetings and stuff in the afternoon, whereas I'm like, no, let's get it done like first thing and then we can move on with it. Because for me, what tends to happen um, is all of the 
uh, fires start to erupt at around 2 p.m. each day. And so I, I just learned that from 2 p.m. on, if I have um, mandatory commitments like meetings or whatever, they just inevitably start feeling like they're um, cramping my style or interfering with um, uh, important needs that need to be addressed kind of in real time. Um, that's just what I've personally noticed. Um, the other thing is I am... Uh, I'm neither a night person nor a morning person, really. Like, I, I, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm sort of a, a 10 to 7-er. That's, <laughs> that's my prime time, really. Um, and so when I find uh, that I'm, I'm taking meetings in the morning, then that gives me the motivation that I need to get my day started and, and really just, like, get up, get ready, um, and be ready to take things on. Otherwise, it's like, you know, I am totally guilty of hanging out on the couch until like 12 watching TikToks, right? And then being like, oh, shoot, now I have, you know, a full day's work ahead of me and all the fires are going to start coming in. And now I don't have um, uh, enough buffer room to be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish. So anyway, um, that really comes from just understanding uh, how you work best. I mean, I know it's really challenging like for Sophia and I, because we have similar kinds of um, occupations where it's like, we do have the freedom to make our own schedules in, in a lot of cases. Like, yes, we're bound by what clients need or um, when shows are happening and, and whatnot, but we're not running a store, right? Like we don't need to be there from 8.30 till 5.30 every single day or something like that. So I appreciate that this advice um, is easier for some people than others. For people who are running a brick and mortar business with set hours or whatever that looks like, I understand that this is um, a bit more challenging to achieve. Um, so what I would offer in that case for people who, who don't have as much flexibility in terms of their own um, schedules is um, really pay attention to, to when you're most excited to, to be working on stuff. Like, like Sophia said, you know, she feels really creative in the morning. Well, that's a really important part of, of her job is, is harnessing that creativity. Um, you know, for, for those of you who may own a bakery or something like that, maybe for you, it's like, yeah, I love the 4am starts. Like that's when I feel like I can really get my hands literally into whatever I'm creating that day. So from four to seven, that's, that's my time to um, like be in, in my zone and, and be in my kitchen sort of thing. And then I can get on with the business aspect of it from then on. That's totally hypothetical. That schedule sounds atrocious to me, but again, like it really depends on what, on what you need and what serves you best. Um, another thing I'd say is always, uh, uh, schedule your sleep, like prioritize your rest, no matter what that actually looks like. So, um, if you are sort of, uh, if you do enjoy burning that midnight oil, that's fantastic. Like you can have a, a 12 AM till, or yeah, 12 AM till 3 AM, whatever creativity fest or whatever productivity fest. Um, but then, you know, do yourself a favor and, and as much as possible, try and schedule like a nap in the middle of the afternoon or something like that. Anything that can help ensure that um, your body and your mind is able to, to recover and be able to perform at its best, regardless of the stress that you're putting it under. Um, again, perhaps for some of you on this call, that, that might be very pie in the sky sort of thinking. Um, there really is no one size fits all solution to that. But I, I would offer that. Um, you know, you are going to know yourself and, and, and your needs better than anybody else. So do what you can to honor those. Um, and then regarding contingency plans. So I, I found my um, uh, niche in sort of like the production management and uh, producer sort of role recently. Um, and in that role, basically, you learn very quickly that whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, so to quote Dwight D. Eisenhower, it is not about the plan, it is about the planning. So um, if you set yourself up with one, one plan and then something uh, throws a wrench into that, you're screwed. You haven't taken the time to really think that through. So instead, come up with at least a B and C plan, if not a DEF plan. Um, that way you can account for anything from uh, employees not showing up to supply chain issues to weather issues, whatever that happens to look like. Again, coming from uh, theater, like theater, film, and television, we have to deal with absolutely everything all the time. Um, so that's why I'm so um, adamant about that particular strategy. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we also just got a message from Katie Lindern, who's also a photographer. Hello, Katie, in the chat, who says that she struggles with um, keeping a regular schedule, which is basically the theme of this first portion of um, the webinar. It, it is great to have a regular schedule, and we totally get that with kids home and, you know, at school and at home and Ben can talk to this. Um, <laughs> it can be a little bit difficult to keep a regular schedule. So um, don't be too hard on yourself at this particular point in time, Katie, because there are definitely some elements that are beyond your control right now. I think for things like this, give yourself a little bit of compassion and allow yourself a little bit of, of space to deal with all that frustrating stuff. Sure. And I would just say too, the, uh, the calendar, uh, in our house is, um, is, is pretty critical there too, where like we're blocking off. Um, so I share a calendar with my wife and so, you know, I can see what, um, what she's got in her calendar. She can see what I've got in my calendar. And then like, you know, with our son who's, um, in kindergarten, <laughs> <laughs> like someone needs to be with them uh, while he's doing his online learning. And so like we've got, you know, handoff of, of that going on quite often. And so it's uh, the live and die by the calendar <laughs> essentially is, is how we operate. And it's a good thing that like I, that's how I've approached my business uh, for a very long time anyway. So it just kind of fit in there. It's still challenging, absolutely, because um, yes, I'm lucky that I only have one. So uh, that's where I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but the calendar is fantastic. So apparently, I, I only put digital calendars into this list of tools, but perhaps we should add a big paper or whiteboard calendar for the fridge so that you can keep track of your schedule with your family. Um, I use Google calendars. I have them synced between all of my Apple devices because Apple and Google don't hate each other, um, as people might think. Um, syncing my calendars is excellent. A lot of people use Outlook. It doesn't matter what platform you're using, so long as it does what you want it to do and it works with your sort of workflow. Um, time tracking, so you can use things like Toggle or Harvest to track your hours while you're working on something um, on a particular task or a particular job. These things are really handy, especially when you need to invoice based on um, the amount of time that you're spending on a job. But you might also take a look at something like rescue time if you struggle with getting distracted online because rescue time will watch what you're doing on your computer and then point out how long you spent on all of those things. Um, so that you can stop spending hours of your day on Facebook, um, like I might. And then you can use things like freedom, as I mentioned, and your parental controls on your um, devices so that you stop spending time on things that you shouldn't spend time on. And I just wanted to also mention break time. Um, it's a little app for Macs. I'm not sure what the equivalent for a PC would be, but it just you set an amount of time and then it will remind you when to, you know, get off your computer and stand up and walk around for a little bit. So it's a good way to, you know, say you set an hour of time for each task. Um, then at that hour of time, it'll be like, okay, stop, take a walk around, come back to the next task. All right. Now the painful one for me, the email, the thing that I struggle with, this is my actual inbox as of yesterday. So, um, let's start with, um, just, you know, don't check your email constantly. Do not leave your email inbox open at all times. This is a bad idea. Um, every email might seem like it's a fire that needs to be put out, but if we spend all day putting out fires, we would never get our real work done, which is what actually makes us money. So let's keep focused on that. Um, there are a few ways to get out of your email inbox. So obviously make a point of only checking your email once or twice a day and beyond those times, get out of your email. Um, and one strategy that has worked very well for me has been to check and read all of my emails first and then answer them second. 
So these fancy colored flags that I have here, I go through all of my unread emails and then I mark them based on what needs a response. Um, emails that I need to do something with and then I just get rid of anything that I don't need to deal with. Um, so as you can see, I am behind by about 65 emails that need a response from me, but you know, I'll get to that later today. <laughs> Create email templates. Um, so this can be really handy um, when you find yourself typing out the same emails over and over again. A good place to start with email templates is to start with um, you know, those welcome emails. So you get a new lead coming into your inbox, um, and you're probably going to send pretty much the same response to them every single time you get one. Um, you can maybe put email templates into your CRM, um, and we will talk about CRMs a little bit later, but if not, you can simply save email templates to a Word document and have that easily accessible, open it up, copy and paste. And this will save you hours of time um, once you have email templates, you might also find that you can automate some of those emails, especially through your CRM. So for example, when someone contacts me from, their, from my website, you will automatically receive an email five minutes later, thanking them for their message and outlining some of the details of the process of working with me. So these emails are customized to each job type. So um, couples looking for a wedding photography will receive one email and people looking for personal branding photos will receive another. And the typical response to these emails is, thanks for getting back to me so quickly. So <laughs> I recommend that people use these email templates and automations because it definitely sets a good um, example, starts things out on the right foot. Um, as I mentioned, I use a lot of automation with my business. So um, I automate notifications for upcoming invoices. This has been really good with my clients. Um, it ensures that I get paid sooner um, and helps build trust with my clients because they know that I'll let them know when payments do. Um, I automatically email receipts to clients when they've made a payment. I automate meeting reminders, which means that fewer people miss meetings. And the result is that I make more money. So win-win for everyone. Um, I send tips and session reminders to my clients. And not only does this help create a good experience uh, for my clients. It also prompts them to respond. So um, any concerns, any questions get answered before a session. So when we show up, there's no confusion. Everyone knows what's going to happen. Um, and then I automate worksheets. This is a big one in particular with my wedding clients. Um, in the months leading up to their wedding, I'll, they'll automatically receive um, emails requesting information on different things. So this helps eliminate stress for my clients and on more than one occasion, I have heard from my clients that I was the single vendor that they worked with that they didn't have to worry about. Um, so these all are great ways to save hours upon hours upon hours of going through emails and typing them out and sending them to people. Um, and also definitely helps create a good relationship between you and your clients. Uh, before we move on, Denise yes. had a question. She's asking, do you, do you use a software to create your templates for email? I'm not sure what you mean by software to create templates. Um, by template, I simply mean the text of the email. So it's not um, an actual look of an email. So um, you can just put it into a Word document. Um, that will probably work. If you're working on a CRM, you might be able to put them directly into your CRM so it's like super accessible. Um, you can also do it with, um, if you're on, if you use Gmail, for example, um, you can use canned responses and some email apps will also save templates for you so you can easily pop them in. Okay. So this is definitely one of the most annoying things that I have to deal with with people or have had to deal with with people, which is making appointments, um, trying to schedule meetings by email. For example, I'll give three times that I'm available and then someone will tell me that none of those times work for them. And then we have to go back and forth for like 50 billion days before we actually get a meeting scheduled. 
Um, all of this changed when I started using Acuity. So platforms like Acuity Scheduling allow you to set the times that you're available. And then the platform will have a look at your calendar and then the times that are available within that period of time. So times that are not booked in your calendar, people can book an appointment. They're su super easy to use. So there's things like Acuity um, Scheduling, Calendly, um, Simply Scheduling. Uh, you just send a link to people and sit here, book an appointment, uh, and they can do it themselves. And it eliminates all the back and forth. Um, and if you've booked an appointment with our digital service squad in the past, you know how easy it is for customers to schedule an appointment. It really makes a good impression on people. So if you book in-person or online meetings with clients, customers, leads, um, colleagues, get one of these because it will save you a lot of headaches. Just for fun, I wanted to go over um, my process for when I receive a new lead um, so that you sort of understand how much templates and um, automation can do for you. So I've used these strategies that we just chatted about um, to create a system which my clients comment on regularly. Um, very often, I'm actually told that people book me because my system made everything so easy, which I will take as a compliment. Um, clients who contact me from my website, uh, book a meeting right inside of the contact form. Um, and then my website creates a new lead in my CRM. And then that lead will receive confirmation of their meeting with the meeting details, as well as a welcome email just to say hello, to introduce myself and to give them some details on what it's like to work with me. And then when it comes, comes time for their meeting, they receive a reminder with all of the applicable information and the Zoom link and everything so that they're ready to log in. There's, you know, they don't forget, they don't struggle to get online. They don't have to search for the link. Um, and the nice thing about this process is that at no point in this process do I have to do any work. So the first time that I actually get my hands dirty with this client or lead um, is when I do the actual consultation. So um, everything up until the consultation is handled behind the scenes, which is really excellent for me. <laughs> so CRMs, um, if you don't have one already, you probably should get one. A CRM is customer relationship management software. It's the one tool that all businesses need. It will keep track of your customers, orders, schedules, contracts, and practically everything else that you <laughs> need to deal with and keep track of in your business. Um, many CRMs will allow you to automate business tasks that you don't need or want to do, um, like send automated emails, um, and CRMs can seem quite pricey at times, um, but you will not regret the investment in your CRM. That said, if you just want to dabble with a CRM or you have a limited budget, there are free options. For example, on this list, Capsule CRM is free. Um, so if that's something that you are considering, then check out some of the free options. Um, if you meet with customers or colleagues, as we already mentioned, online or offline, try a booking application. As mentioned, I've used Acuity Scheduling. The Digital Service Squad uses Acuity Scheduling. Um, both Acuity and Calendly are standalone applications. You can just go and create account, an account, create a calendar. Um, or you can use something like Simply Schedule, which is what I use now. And it is a WordPress plugin. So there are tons of options um, that can work with the platforms you're already on or that are standalone. And then finally, like your calendar, it doesn't really matter what email program you use so long as you are able to use it. Um, so if the email program that you use works for you, that's excellent. Um, you might also look at uh, plugins like Mail Butler or Boomerang, both of which allow you to schedule emails and track when people have opened them, when they have clicked on links and stuff like that. Um, the beauty of this is if you are one of those people who is working between 12 and three, like Rochelle mentioned, um, you're checking your emails, you can schedule them for the next day. So it doesn't look like you're up in the middle of the night answering emails. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we are ready to move on to the super fun part, social media posting.
just one second. Okay, so it's definitely one of the biggest complaints that I hear is that people struggle with scheduling to social media. It can feel like a lot when you're trying to force yourself to post to social media every day. So my number one tip for social media is to schedule your social media once a week. So pick like a time um, once a week to schedule all of your social media posts for the next week. Um, if you've never scheduled before, you'll need to use a platform like Later or Planoly. Facebook has scheduling to Facebook and Instagram built right into it. Um, and then of course you could use um, Google My Business, that platform to post to your Google My Business. Um, when it comes to captioning things, if you don't know what to say, if you can't think of what to say, use a quote. And it, this might be something that some people think is lazy. I disagree. And I disagree because people always, I've noticed, respond very well to quotes. So if there is a quote that eloquently says what you want to say, use a quote. Um, I also recommend that you use um, a hashtag platform like hashtag IQ. So hashtag IQ lets you search hashtags, research how well they're performing, but also save collections of hashtags. Um, so this can be really handy when you have like multiple products or locations that you work in and you need to use different hashtags. Um, save lists of hashtags for later so that you're not searching through, you know, all of your followers posts trying to find hashtags that might be applicable to what you're sharing. Okay. I'm going to guess that everyone on this call has used or heard of Canva. And if you have not used it, I think that you should be using it. It is incredibly useful software. You can create templates in it that you can use over and over again. Um, it sizes things perfectly for Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and everywhere else on the internet online and offline that you could pretty much possibly need. Um, so create templates with your branding um, and then you'll be, it'll save you a lot of time when you're creating graphics for social media later on. Um, also save folders of images um, of your work to pull on later. Um, don't think that you need to post like something you did yesterday today or that you need to post something you did today today. Like keep a folder of a whole bunch of images um, that you can use in the future. It doesn't matter if it's if, if it was five years ago, um, you can post it today and then you're never going to run out of content for later. Uh, Denise? Yes. Oh, yeah, and Katie Canva Hanna does save that. Yeah. Canva does save all of your templates so you can just go back to them later um, and pop in a new photo or change the text or whatever. And then the nice thing is that then all of your graphics also match. Um, oh, yeah, Katie, I hear you with the hating social media. It is something that you can outsource. Um, ben, I know that Digital Main Street, you can log in and like see different vendors. Is that something that you could explain um, for the group just in case there's anyone else interested in that? Um, yeah, so there, yeah, there are a, there is a uh, directory of digital marketing vendors. So um, everything from uh, web developers to social media management companies. Um, one of the issues, though, is that it's hard to, um, it's hard to sort and uh, find, but so there, so there's a lot there you can check out, um, but definitely um, if you reach out to us directly, we can chat about sort of what you're looking for and maybe make a couple of uh, recommendations. We usually, we try to recommend at least three um, people, companies, depending on what you're looking for, because um, there's a variety of options out there. Good reason for, to book a consult. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Um, and definitely book a consult with us to help you with any of your 
social media scheduling stuff as well, because this is a pretty broad overview of scheduling to social media. Um, and then lastly, build a content calendar. Um, so once a year, at the end of the year, I do sort of a review of my previous year's business. So where I got business from, um, what worked, what didn't. And at that time, I also build a calendar for the following year. Um, some things that you can do to build a content calendar is like think about your product or service. Um, what months would be, would you want to be promoting particular um, items or particular services? And then theme the months accordingly. Um, so build this calendar out. And then when it comes time, you know, for December, you know that you're going to be promoting your holiday stuff, right? Or perhaps at the end of August, you're going to be promoting back to school stuff. Um, one thing that you can do if you really struggle with what to post to social media on a regular basis is check out like international days or world day, because there's some really funny stuff on there um, that you can, I'm gonna guarantee there are things that are applicable to your business. Use those things to create content that people engage with. Um, ask questions, you know, World Donut Day, post yourself getting a donut and like ask other people what their favorite flavor of donut is, I don't know. World Donut Day sounds like the best day to me. Is anyone um, in this group using a content calendar? Michelle is, I am. Ben probably is. <laughs> Content calendars are essential. You've seen them everywhere. You can go online and download a sample content calendar if that's something that you really struggle with or you can build a whole thing out for yourself. Okay, so tools for social media. Canva, obviously, again, Facebook Business Suite will allow you to um, post to Facebook and to Instagram. You can schedule to both platforms and you can schedule independently. So you can schedule posts that function best on Facebook and you can schedule posts that function best on Instagram. Um, later, Planoly, you can also use Canva to schedule your social media posts. I have not done that yet. So don't ask me how to do that. Oh, yes. Can I, yeah, can I talk about that? I was just about to say that, um, yeah, Canva is, a, is actually a really awesome tool for that. And, um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, it, it puts it into, I like that it puts it into the kind of visual calendar display so you can see um, like when things are going out as you schedule them. Um, and then, yeah, just from a, like from a graphic design standpoint, my favorite thing about Canva is that, um, I, and I was just using this yesterday, um, I popped into Photoshop to do something, which I have full access to Photoshop, Illustrator, everything. But um, Canva, I've saved all of my brand colors so that anytime I make a design, I can just like quickly choose any of my brand colors. And that's something that like Photoshop, I mean, I'd have to pull open, you know, files that have those colors in them and stuff. And, and like, it just makes it so much more efficient to have all that stuff there, your logos, your colors. And even in, in as you mentioned, like some, you can have, you can save designs and it's like, it's a no brainer. It, it makes things so, and then from there, schedule it to your social media. Even if you're posting, like you want to post it right away, that's fine. Like you can do that and it's amazing. And I love Canva. <laughs> Yes, I also use Photoshop and all that fun stuff. And it's just so much easier <laughs> in Canva. The other nice thing about it is it will, it, it will save all of your stuff across platforms, so across all of your devices. So you can, you know, have your computer go out to a coffee shop, not this month, but probably in the future. And, you know, post to social media from a coffee shop. You don't have to be on a particular, um, on a particular machine. And yes, Canva is for the most part free. There are some, some options that require that you pay, but I, I don't pay for Canva. Ben, do you pay for Canva? I do actually. 
Oh. Um, and so I'm not, that's where I'm not too sure if those brand, like her specific question is uh, brand the colors. custom colors, brand fonts. Yeah. Uh, I think those are free. Yeah. Right. The, the fonts I think might be a paid option, but I do have the brand colors in mine and I don't pay for it. So I'm going to guess that's free. Yes. Super handy. All right, and then hashtag IQ, again, save your hashtags. Um, they are an important element um, when posting to social media. So um, even if you're not gonna save your hashtags to something like hashtag IQ, go ahead and like check it out and you can research hashtags and see how they're performing and it'll give you, you know, some inspiration for potential other hashtags that might be applicable. You looked like you were gonna um, say something. Yeah, yeah, can I just say too, so, um a tool that I was actually just raving a lot about uh, recently and even yesterday, again, I was using it, uh, same project that I was doing in Canva, I was uh, using um, Linktree is another one. It's like, it's somewhat of a time saver, I think, when uh, like it doesn't really fit in that category, but it kind of does because um, when it comes to, you know, um, just creating that post, right, as you talk about like, what do you write and, and developing all that content? Um, you know, if you're sharing a specific link to somewhere, um, Instagram, you know, only allows one link. So oftentimes you have to go in there and change the link and say in your post, you know, link in bio. And, uh, and so Linktree is a tool that takes them to somewhere else that just here's a bunch of different links that you may or may not need. Um, and I find it incredibly efficient. And, um, and I think it does save time because like, if you have, let's say like, for example, you know, I, I use it in promoting this, uh, these webinars, I just have to say, you know, um, the, the link is in the bio. And as long as I go in there, you know, once every two weeks to just update and make sure the most recent webinars are coming up and they're in there then I'm set and it's, uh, it's, it's actually very efficient um, and, and quite a bit of a time saver, which is really cool. Um, so Linktree and that one again, also free <laughs> for the most part, there are some paid options, but I, I don't actually know anyone that uses a paid Linktree account. I could see that being pretty handy as well. I just wanted to mention also um, like if social media is something that you specifically struggle with. Um, we haven't shared in this webinar how to do social media, just some time-saving tips basically to keep things more efficient. So if the actual act of like um, formatting your posts for different platforms and using hashtags and you know all of the tools is challenging for you, then definitely look a consultation with us and we can you know actually walk you through the process of actually posting um, on whatever platform you choose and again none of these platforms are necessarily better than the others um, they're just different formats so um, have a look at a few of them and see you know what has um, the options that you're looking for we also have a, a plethora of webinars that we have done in the past on that topic as well, including a pretty detailed one on using Canva. So uh, check those out too. Good point, that's excellent. Rochelle, did you wanna add anything else? No, <laughs> no. I feel like uh, everything is, has uh, more or less been covered. I know I learned um, about a few tools that I have not um, heard about before. So, so thank you for that. That's really exciting. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, what, again, like I'll just double down on the fact that like, as I've said in pretty much every, every webinar that I have led up until this point, like it is very easy for um, all of us to sort of like, talk you through these really magical concepts and, <laughs> and like, uh, you know, tout the pearls of wisdom that we've learned over many years of, of um, putting ourselves in ridiculous positions where we have to learn all of these things. Um, but that is not to say that, uh, you know, our way is, is the way to do it. Like, again, um, for me in particular, like, 
I am constantly enrolled in um, uh, classes and, and courses and uh, like support systems and all this sort of stuff to, to help me um, foster good habits. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, okay, well, now I'm going to throw all that out and do what works for me. Like from every single thing that I do, there's basically one or two um, things that stick. And that's what forms my particular system. So yeah, I, I just say that like, not everything needs to resonate with you. You don't have to be excited about trying all of these tools or any of these tools. Um, but there, regardless of that, uh, there really is no excuse to um, set yourself up for success and you will know the best way to make that happen for you. I agree. Like I've mentioned a few times, um, use whatever platform works best for you. The same goes for scheduling your time because you could look up, you know, the best morning routine um, and that morning routine will not work for you if you prefer to be up until three in the morning and sleep through you know, the next eight hours. So don't just download someone else's routine from the internet and expect it to work for you. Um, find out where, what works for you. And then there's a ton of tools that you can use to make all of that more efficient. Ben, were you wanting to? Yeah, I was going to mention too, um, one of the tools um, that I know, like I've it's helped me out a lot in the last couple of months, especially it was um, finally getting on board with a uh, team management software. So um, as, um, as we sort of grew at our team and different projects and things were, were coming up, um, moving things over to that platform, we use Basecamp, um, which uh, is a little bit more of an expensive option, but I just, I don't know, I like things in boxes. I, find, I love the design of it. Um, and, uh, but having every, you know, having a lot of those discussions for one out of your email um, and in a place that's much more sort of task oriented um, and assignment oriented, it just, yeah, made my life a lot uh, more streamlined and, uh, and having those tasks as well, as you said, like when, when it comes to like kind of setting my day out and um, trying to avoid those fires, it lets me focus on, okay, what actually needs to get done, right? Like, what are those things? Because I, I often just completely lose sight of those, like, you know, those, those really important tasks, um, like invoicing or, um, you know, keeping the business going, like important things, uh, they'll just get forgotten about because, oh, someone emailed me and they have a problem and, I, and we need to fix it. And, and yes, that is important, but um, uh, yeah, it's about finding balance and making sure that those main day-to-day -day tasks don't get missed and, or pushed aside um, and, and get the, the focus that they deserve. Agreed. <laughs> um, so anyone who has questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. I was just going to ask if someone could post the uh, link for <laughs> consultations and Rochelle read my mind and posted it. So anyone who needs help with anything that we have discussed today, go ahead and click the link that Rochelle posted in the chat um, and you can book a meeting with us and we will help you out with whatever you need. But does anyone have any questions or a particular, you know, time management issue that you have struggled with that you could use possibly some insight on? Let us know in the chat. I assume that people are not able to speak, correct? Denise has given us a very mysterious question in the chat. Does anyone else yeah. have any questions or anything that you we can help you with? Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so yeah, Denise, um, it looks like you have lots of questions, which is awesome. And, uh, and we're happy to help. So yeah, definitely book that consult and we will uh, look forward to helping you out. Um,
Hey, yeah, there's the link. There. Yeah, you can continue to post questions in the chat for the next few minutes, but here's the details that you may need um, from us, including the link where you can book a meeting with us and get more information about us or give us a call. Well, awesome. Yeah, if there's no more, um, if there are no more questions, then uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. And thank you very much, Sophia, for running us through that presentation, for Rochelle, for your support on that. And yeah, we look forward to um, helping you out. If you have any other questions, follow-ups, um, we are still around the Digital Service Squad and um, yeah, practicing what we preach with our with our booking calendar, uh, be sure to book that and uh, it makes it super efficient and easy. And we will uh, see you next time. Next webinar is coming up uh, on SEO, search engine optimization. So be sure to check that out. Um, you can register at enterprisecenter.ca in the events calendar. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye for now.